Hi, I'm Christina and this is a book review of The Island of Missing Trees by Alive Shafak. This is a historical fiction novel with a touch of magical realism. It was published in 2021 and it's been long listed for the Women's Prize for Fiction 2022, which is where I first heard about it. So it's her 12th novel and it's my first book by this author and I really enjoyed this book. It's a definite five star read for me and that's mainly because the writing is just so, so beautiful. So this story is set in both London and Cyprus. We meet a girl called Ada who is 16 years old. She lives in London with her father Costas who is a botanist and author and she was born in Britain. Her mother is a Turkish Cypriot and her father is a Greek Cypriot. So since the announcement of their relationship, her parents have not had any contact with their respective families. So then we jump back in time to Cyprus in the 1970s when her parents are both teenagers. And then we alternate between these two timelines in London in the late 2010s and then in Cyprus in the 1970s. So we first meet this family during a time of grief and then they have a somewhat unexpected visitor in the shape of Ada's auntie, her mother's sister, and this is the first time that Ada has met anyone in her extended family, and we get to see these two women creating and developing a relationship with one another. So this story is really about family, about love, about loss and grief, and it's also a story about belonging and identity and heritage, and it's also a story about war and fear and religion and hope. So there is a lot of different themes packed into this book. And then it's also a story that focuses heavily on nature. And I have to say, I think that's one of my favorite aspects of this book. There is a lot of time spent on plants, specifically trees. And in fact, one of the narrators is a fig tree. And I really, really loved that. Magical realism isn't something that often works for me, but it absolutely worked here. So this fig tree lives in their garden in London and it's been cultivated from a cutting of a fig tree that grows in a tavern where her parents used to meet secretly when they were teenagers in Cyprus. So obviously this tree is very symbolic to her parents and their relationship. So I just thought this narrator was wonderful. It was so unique and imaginative and I just think it added such an extra layer to this story and it just made this book unlike anything I've ever read before. So yeah, I think that's one of my favourite aspects of this story. It was so unexpected too. I went into this not knowing that at all and I thought it was done really, really well. Overall, the way in which this story is written is just so beautiful. I adore her writing style. I thought it was so, so captivating. And it's a very poignant novel at times too. So yeah, I thought it was excellent. And I also learned so much from this novel. I learned so much about the plants and animals that are native to Cyprus and those that visit the island too. And I also learned a lot about the political situation in Cyprus and the war. And that was something that I knew very little about. And I thought she handled it really well. I thought it was done very carefully and very sensitively and the way in which she tied the true history of Cyprus with her fictionalized story was seamless. Her characters really did feel like they were going through this experience and yeah it definitely felt very very real and I thought it was so well done. And there's also two other characters in this that I really liked. They are the two men that own the tavern where the fig tree grows, <laughs> where Ada's parents meet when they're teenagers secretly. And I just thought their characters were wonderful and the way that was all intertwined in the story too had a kind of mystery element inside it. I thought that was done really, really well. I thought they were excellent characters. And again, that whole kind of arch of that story was also very poignant. So yeah, I would highly, highly recommend this book. So I think she is a wonderful storyteller and she is such a beautiful writer. You can absolutely expect beautiful writing from start to finish with this book. So I will definitely be reading more of her books. Like I said, this is her 12th novel, so I have 11 other novels that I can read. And I think I am most drawn to 10 minutes 38 seconds in this strange world. One, because I think that title is so intriguing, I have no idea what it's about, but it just catches my eye. 
and also it was shortlisted for the Booker Prize. So I think that's definitely the next one that I will be reading of hers. If you have read this book, I would love to know your comments down below. And if you've read any of her other books, I'd love to know what you thought of those two. If you've read a few, definitely let me know which one is your favourite. So on the Women's Prize for Fiction, this is the second book from the long list that I have read so far. This one, five star, absolutely wonderful. And the other one that I read was Flamingo by Rachel Elliott. Again, another five star, absolutely wonderful. And I have a book review on that one, which I will link down below, just in case you're interested in the Women's Prize for Fiction. So far, I've read two out of 16 and they've both been absolutely wonderful. Very, very different, I have to say, but equally as good as each other. Both five stars for me. And I think both worthy winners of the Women's Prize, even though I've only read two. So yeah, I'm very much looking forward to reading lots of more books on the long list. I actually just picked up one today from my library. So thank you so much for watching. Please like the video if you liked it and please do subscribe if you'd like to see more of me talking about books, particularly the Women's Prize for Fiction, So I, because I do have plans to read lots and lots of those. So yeah, thanks for watching. Bye.